This box here came from a viewer of mine named Tom. So we're going to open it today and see what Tom sent us. Of course, you must use the largest knife possible. Tom sent us bubble wrap, guys. Ooh, it's a big boy. This guy, he looks like he is a ZX0. So this would be a 7010, I think. He's a new thin client. You know how much I love these. I also got this. It's another one. Ooh, this one's cool. It's an HP. I don't remember what model it is, but it's another thin client. So between these two, which one should we tear down in this video? The new Dell, the HP. Any mean my know? So we're gonna take a look at the Dell today. Because I already have the screwdrivers on the bench. I think the 3040 has size envy. So it looks like this time we got gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3, two USB 2. DisplayPort and DVI. Don't see DVI too often anymore. I will be using DisplayPort for all of my testing because that's what I have cables for. Do I gotta take the bottom screw out? Looks like I do have to take the bottom screw out. Okay. Come on, get out of there. Here we go, let's take a look at the insides. So here's what we got. So this is quite a bit nicer looking than the 5060, although I believe this is an older model. So we got two RAM slots for a full size DIMM. Let's pop this out and see what's in here. There's only got four modules on it. Two gig, PC3-12800, CL11. It's DDR3, so it currently has two gigs. I don't know what the maximum is, but it's gotta be at least four with two sticks. I'm not sure if there's a memory size limit on this particular CPU. I didn't look that up yet. It's got a passive cooler, so the, the CPU is going to be under this heat sink. It goes up with the heat pipe cooler up there. We've got, this is another SATA disk on module. So this is a full size SATA connector here. You see SATA and SATA power, but it's short. So you wouldn't be able to fit a full size drive in here. But the chassis is big enough. You could get a SATA extension cable like female to male. Stick it on the back of the cover maybe if you want a full size SATA SSD. We got an M.2 that looks like a, let me look this up. Actually I'm going to bet this is a mini PCI not an M.2 because um, it's got two standoffs instead of one standoff like you'd have for an M.2 Wi-Fi card. But this would have been for Wi-Fi. There's spots in the back of the case for Wi-Fi. Got some connectors here that aren't labeled. I'm not sure what these connectors are, but they're not labeled. Got a full-size SATA, SATA connector here, along with so a regular SATA and a, this power connector's four pin. Would probably be power for the SATA drive as well. If you can find a cable that goes to this, um, whatever it is, maybe that's it's probably a fan, I'm gonna guess. None of these are labeled, they all just have a number on them. Which is of course very unhelpful. So nice and easy to get to the DIMMs. Mini PCIe I believe is what this is, not M.2, I don't think. Um, USB 2 audio power button. Not bad. So I'm going to put the case back on and we're going to boot it up. Let's see what we find in the BIOS. So we're going to boot it up for the first time and see what's already on this thing. So Dell to enter BIOS. Some of these come wiped, some of them don't, so you might get some fun stuff like this. It's not finding my mouse, my mouse isn't working, oh there it goes. WDM server, it's trying to do Windows deployment. Huh. This is interesting. Some sort of Citrix client. Oh well. Let's boot it up in the BIOS. So we're going to press delete, enter setup. 
Okay, we got a password prompt. So the password for these guys is Fireport with a capital F. F I R E P O R T. Enter. That should take us into the BIOS. Let's see what we got here. I'm turn my face off so you can see everything. So we got AMD processor, 1.65 gigahertz. That's not that fast. 2 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs SATA flash drive, nothing on SATA port 2. So both SATA ports do show up here. That's a good sign. Advanced. So we support IDE or AHCI. Power loss recovery. This is a good one if you're using. This is a good one if you're using a home server, because you can set this to always on, and then as soon as you plug it in, it'll boot up. So you don't have to manually push the button every time. It's kind of odd. That there's a separate menu for it. Audio enabled. Boot from USB. We should enable this so we can boot from our USB drive. Uh, power management, security, boot. So I don't know how it thinks we have an ATAP CD because we sure don't. But USB hard drive is usually what it considers to be a USB flash drive. So we're going to hold, we're going to hit the plus key and move this guy up to the top. That way we can boot our Linux image. That should take us into Zubuntu, where we can see how performance is. Okay, let's see what the disks look like. So whatever was on here before, three one gig partitions, and yeah. Yeah, so the 1.9 gig is my flash drive. So SDA is what's on here before. It's formatted with XFAT, that's bizarre. Plus the uh, EFI partition. Well, we can wipe it. No big deal. So how is it as a desktop? Let's try web browsing. Let's load my website. It comes up pretty fast. It's kind of expected. Scrolling is not bad. Again, kind of expected. How about YouTube? Can this thing do YouTube? Let's see. Let me tell you, it's a slow experience doing YouTube on this thing. Ah! the hell is going on? Trying to click the settings, change, do that. Okay, let's change the resolution to, so we're at 480. Are we able to do 480? 480 is good. I would hope this thing can do 480. How about we go up to 720? We dropping a lot of frames here at 720. So the answer to will it do 720 is is no, like not even close. This is terrible. It's worse than the 3040. How about we get the LS CPU and all that good stuff? LS PCI. I'm gonna put that down in the blog post, link in the description. So you can see the all the CPU flags in case you have a specific use case that needs some of them. One last test, we're going to try net booting. So if you've been following along on my channel, you know I've been playing with net booting, and uh, I bumped this PXC LAN up higher than the SATA drive and the USB drive. It should try net booting off the netboot server. We'll see if it can run the thin client I already have set up. 
I've tested this thin client with some virtual machines and with the 3040. So let's see if the unmodified thin client image will just work on this device. Let's see, coming up into the PXC loader, let's see what it chooses to pick. So it got the Undy one, which is the legacy BIOS version. It loaded iPixie. What the hell error is that? No IRQ handler for vector. Well, that's interesting. So despite that uh, kernel error, it still seemed to be functioning. It's downloading the APK overlay super slow. Oh no, no space left on device. It has so little RAM that it uh, couldn't install. That's a fun one. Um, interesting. The 3040 didn't have this problem running UEFI. Yeah, wow. Well, it's just so low on RAM. You gotta upgrade the RAM to do anything with it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Dell Wise 7010, also known as the ZX0 was generously donated by a viewer named Tom, so thank you, Tom. Tom also donated to me an HP, and we're going to take the HP apart in another video, so stay tuned for that. And as always, stay tuned for more adventures.